In 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, Paul talks about the spiritual gifts, and this is really a foundational, one of the clearest places where the gifts are talked about in Scripture, and a lot of people base their doctrines and theologies on these chapters. However, there are a lot of things that are distorted about the way people go about it. One of the problems in the church today is that people will be seeking the gifts for themselves. What I mean by that is people seek the spiritual gifts so that they can have these experiences and have these manifestations. They want to experience God and have this encounter with God, and so they're seeking the gifts for that reason. And this is what we see in a lot of the Pentecostal church, but also, you know, in, in various charismatic churches, we see people coming looking for these experiences and these manifestations. And a lot of times what happens there is not even biblical. They're doing things that aren't even listed in the spiritual gifts. In fact, actually, some of the things that you see happening there are only described in Scripture as being demonic, such as shaking on the ground and convulsing. Every time that's found in Scripture, it's when the disciples or Jesus are casting out a demon, because that is not a good thing. I'm not going to get into all that right now, but I'm just saying the problem I see in a lot of these churches is that people are focusing on an experience they're focusing on this encounter. They're focusing on what they can get from it. And that's not biblical. When you go looking for these spiritual gifts so that you can have an encounter, so that you can hear from God, so that you can get something from it, you're missing the point. And it's actually the point of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Paul's point is that you shouldn't be doing it for yourself. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. In 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 4, Paul says, There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all from the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but the same Lord to serve. And there are different ways that God works through people, but the same God works in all of us in everything we do. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. Right there, Paul says what the purpose of spiritual manifestation is. It's for the common good. And this is what he is teaching throughout these chapters, 12, 13, and 14. He then goes on to list all these different spiritual gifts, but remember, his header, his header statement is that it is for the common good. It's not the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for them to have an experience or for them to encounter God or for them to feel close to God or anything like that. No, it's for the common good. He then goes on to talk about how we shouldn't be looking down on different gifts or we shouldn't be jealous of somebody having one gift when we have a different one. He's saying like, no, the whole body is supposed to operate as one unit and that means that we're each going to have different functions. So he's saying the spiritual gifts are for the common good and there are different gifts and they function together for one common purpose. He's saying that we're each a member of the body of Christ, but it's one body. We need to remember that as Christians, we are one body, the body of Christ on earth. And so we have different functions and different gifts, but the purpose is for us to function as one body. Okay, so so far Paul has said the gifts are for the common good, and each person has a different gift, a different function, so that the body can operate as one unit. Then Paul goes into 1 Corinthians 13, and 1 Corinthians 13 is so widely quoted and totally taken out of context. It's the chapter on love, and everybody's familiar with it. Love is patient, love is kind, it's not jealous, it does not boast, it's not proud, it's not rude, it's not selfish, etc., etc. This is something that's quoted all the time. People make little memes about it, they stick it on their walls in their house, it's quoted in weddings, it's just all over the place. Everyone's familiar with this, but it's totally taken out of context. Because again, Paul said in the last chapter, and remember, Paul didn't write chapter numbers. This is all one solid unit. Like, Paul didn't break it up the way we break it up. You have to read it that way. So Paul said, everything is for the common good, and then he starts writing about love. Because his point is saying, you guys need to approach this differently. You need to come focusing on one another, focusing on how you can help one another and not focusing on what you can get out of it yourself. That's what chapter 13 is about. 
That's what the chapter on love is about. He's talking about love and he's saying like, you guys need to be more concerned about love than you are about these gifts. The spiritual gifts should not be the focus. A lot of times we treat the spiritual gifts like it's the focus, like, oh, I really want to prophesy. Oh, I really want to speak in tongues. Oh, I really want to heal. Oh, I really want to do this or that or the other thing. And we miss the point because the point is the spiritual gifts are given for the common good. They're given so that the body as a whole is built up. And that's what Paul's getting at in chapter 13 here. He's saying love is more important than the spiritual gifts. Love puts others first. Love cares more about what you can do for others than for yourself. And when it comes to the spiritual gifts, the same is true. This is, I mean, that's what he's talking about. He's saying, when you come, your gift that you, the spirit gives you is for you to then give to others. It's not for you to have an experience. The spiritual gifts are not for you to have an encounter with God. It's for you to build up the body. And he says in chapter 13, verse 8, Love never ends. There are gifts of prophecy, but they will be ended. There are gifts of speaking in different languages, but those gifts will stop. There is the gift of knowledge, but it will come to an end. The reason is that our knowledge and our ability to prophesy are not perfect. But when perfection comes, the things that are not perfect will end. What Paul is saying is that, you know, right now there are different gifts where we can prophesy and we can have a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or, or speak in tongues, but all of that is, as he says, only until perfection comes. What Paul is saying is that these spiritual gifts are a temporary thing. They're not going to last forever. He's saying love will last forever. But prophecy, when we're in heaven, we are not going to need to prophesy. Speaking in tongues, when we're in heaven, we're not going to need to speak in tongues. Words of knowledge, when we're in heaven, we're not going to need words of knowledge. The spiritual gifts are for now, but they're not for eternity. They're going to come to an end. But love is something that is going to last for all of eternity. And love is something that is much more important than the spiritual gifts. That's what Paul is getting at. He's not saying the spiritual gifts are going to come to an end here in this life. Some people think that. That's not what he's saying. He's saying when perfection comes, they will, go, they will come to an end. Right now, the purpose of the spiritual gifts is to build up the body. It's not for you to have an experience. It's for the body to grow. When the Lord gives you a spiritual gift, it is for you to build up the body. It's really, he gives you a gift to give to others. Often we hear the word gift and we think of it as he gives you an ability. For example, the Lord will often give me a gift of teaching. It's not, I have an ability to teach. The gift of teaching is he teaches me something. I am supposed to take that and use it to teach others. I'm supposed to give that teaching to others. If I hold on to it for myself, I'm missing the point. All of the gifts are about building up others. And that's what chapter 13 is all about. The spiritual gifts are about helping others. The whole chapter is about that. And we know this because in chapter 12, in verse 7, he said all the spiritual gifts are for the common good. In chapter 13, he's writing about how love is more important than all the gifts. And then in chapter 14, he says over and over again that all the gifts are for the common good. He says, starting in verse 1, Make your aim love and eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For those who have the gift of speaking in different languages are not speaking to people, they are speaking to God. No one understands them. They're speaking secret things through the Spirit. But those who prophesy are speaking to people to give them strength, encouragement, and comfort. The ones who speak in different languages are helping only themselves, but those who prophesy are helping the whole church. I wish all of you had the gift of speaking in different kinds of languages, but more, I wish you would prophesy. Those who prophesy are greater than those who can only speak in different languages, unless someone is there who can explain what is said so that the whole church can be helped. Paul's clearly saying the reason he puts prophecy over tongues is because prophecy helps others. He's continuing his thought from chapter 12. It's for the common good. The spiritual gifts are for the common good, not for yourself. Prophecy is not something that is just for you. The point of prophecy is to build up the church and strengthen the church. He then continues, Brothers and sisters, how will it help you if I come to you speaking in different languages unless I bring you a new truth or some new knowledge or prophecy or teaching? 
It's the same as with lifeless things that make sounds, like a flute or a harp. If they do not make clear musical notes, you will not know what is being played. And in a war, if the trumpet does not give a clear sound, who will prepare for battle? It's the same with you. Unless you speak clearly with your tongue, no one can understand what you are saying. You will be talking into the air. It may be true that there are all kinds of sounds in the world and none is without meaning, but unless I understand the meaning of what someone says to me, we will be like foreigners to each other. It is the same with you. Since you eagerly desire spiritual gifts, seek most of all to have the gifts that help the church go grow stronger. Again, Paul is continuing his thought, saying, It is for the common good. It is for the common good. Speaking in tongues, the reason Paul is saying desire prophecy over tongues is because if you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking only to God. Nobody else can understand you. Now, I'll interject here that this argues that there is such a thing as tongues that's not just like we saw on Pentecost. On Pentecost, people were speaking in tongues so that others who spoke other languages would understand them. But here Paul is saying that tongues is speaking to God and no one can understand. So there, there are two different kinds you can see. On Pentecost, you see them speaking in other languages and other people who spoke those languages understood them. And that is a gift of tongues. And here we see people speaking in tongues are speaking to God, but it's only edifying themselves. It's only building up themselves. You can see that in chapter 14, verse 4 we read earlier. So... Anyway, that's a side point, whether you agree with that or not, that's my thought on it. But here's, here's the real point that Paul's getting at. He's saying you should want the gifts that help everyone else and not the gifts that only help yourself. Tongues, if you come in tongues, you may be saying something that has a meaning. He even says in verse 10, it may be true that there are all kinds of sounds in the world and none is without meaning. Speaking in tongues may have a meaning, it may be doing good, but it's like playing a musical instrument. Unless that instrument is making distinct notes that can be understood by others, they're not going to know what song you're playing. Or in a war, things are, messages are communicated by different trumpet sounds. That's how, at least back then, when they would fight in a war, you would communicate to someone far away by blowing a certain sound on a trumpet. And then they would hear that and they would know what that means and they would do what it's telling them to do. But if the trumpet isn't making any sort of distinct noise, no message is being communicated. And so it's not helping anyone. And he's saying tongues is the same way. If you're speaking in tongues, other people, if you don't have an interpretation, other people don't know what you're saying and you're not actually helping anyone. And that's why he's saying you should desire to have the gifts that help the church grow stronger. And then he continues, therefore... The one who has the gift of speaking in a different language should pray for the gift to interpret what is spoken. If I pray in a different language, my spirit is praying, but my mind does nothing. So what should I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my mind. Otherwise, if you praise God with your spirit, those persons there without understanding cannot say amen to your prayer of thanks because they do not know what you're saying. You may be thanking God in a good way, but the other person is not helped. So he's saying, if you are going to speak in tongues, pray for interpretation so you can speak in tongues and then tell the other people there what you said, and then they will be helped too. And if you're praising God, they can say, amen. If God is giving you a teaching through tongues, they can be built up. And then he continues, I thank God that I speak in different kinds of languages more than all of you. Okay. Paul spoke in tongues more than everyone. It was beneficial. There is a benefit to it. But in the church meetings, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to teach others than thousands of words in a different language. And there we see a little key to what prophecy is about. Because again, this whole chapter he's been saying, seek prophecy rather than tongues. Because prophecy builds up the church. And here he says, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to teach others. The point of prophecy is not just telling the future. I think God does that. And I think that is a form of prophecy. But prophecy is to teach too. Prophecy is to build others up into the image of Christ. All of the gifts serve the purpose of building one another up into the image of Christ. And the reason he's talking about tongues is because this was something that people were just always talking in tongues, always talking in tongues, and they weren't helping one another. 
This is something that's still going on today in some churches. People are talking in tongues and talking in tongues and talking in tongues because everyone is coming for their own experience. Everyone is coming to help themselves. And so everyone comes and they talk in tongues. That's not the purpose of coming together. You can talk in tongues to the Lord. You can talk in tongues to God. But when you come together, the purpose should be to help one another. The purpose should be to build up the church when you meet together. Not for you each to come trying to build up yourselves, trying to help yourselves, trying to have an experience for yourselves. That's not the point. Paul continues down in verse 26. So, brothers and sisters, what should you do? Okay, so at this point, he's said a little bit more. I'm skipping past that. And now he's summarizing. He says in verse 26, So, brothers and sisters, what should you do? When you meet together, one person has a song and another has a teaching. Another has a new truth from God. Another speaks in a different language and another person interprets that language. The purpose of all these things should be to help the church grow strong. When you meet together and you have these spiritual gifts, the purpose is for building up the body. You should not be coming looking for a gift for yourself, for you to build yourself up, for you to have an encounter, for you to have an experience. That is not the purpose of the gifts. The purpose of the gifts is to build up the body. Just an example, for me, often it is the gift of teaching. The Lord teaches me something. I don't hold on to that for myself. It's not just for me to build myself up. I used to do that. The Lord would teach me something and I'd just be like, oh, wow. But when I learned this, I saw all of this about a year and a half ago. And I was like, whoa, the purpose of all of this is to build others up. So when the Lord teaches me something, I need to be using that to teach others and to help others. And when I started doing that, I started being taught more and more and more and more to the point where I can't open my Bible and not be taught because the Lord knows that when he gives me a gift, I use it to build the body. And I've matured in that gift. And there are other gifts that I don't really understand. I'll be honest, I don't. But I know that they're for the purpose of building others up. If you want to grow in a gift, practice using it for others and not yourself. I guarantee you, you will grow in it. For three chapters, he has said over and over again that the purpose of all the gifts is to build one another up and not yourself. And then he says in verse 37, those who think they are prophets or spiritual persons should acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. Those who ignore this will be ignored by God. If you are seeking the gifts for yourself, God's not going to listen to you. And this is what I see honestly in my own past, as well as all throughout the church. I'll talk about myself. I was looking for the gifts. I really was like, I want to prophesy. I want to speak in tongues. I want to do this, that, and the other thing. I, I want these gifts. I want to experience it. I want to, I want to have that. But it was all about me. It was all about like, I want it for myself. And honestly, I wasn't getting it. It wasn't happening. But when I saw this, like I said earlier, when I saw this and I saw, oh wow, God is going to ignore me if I'm ignoring this because the point of the gifts is to help others. If I'm not doing it to help others, I'm not going to grow in these gifts. Then I started practicing the gifts for the benefit of others and not myself. And that's when I really started to see growth in these gifts. That's when I really started to understand more of the gifts. And that's when I really started receiving the gifts more because I was using it not for myself, but for others. And that is the point of the spiritual gifts. First Corinthians 12, 13 and 14 talks about the spiritual gifts more than any other place in the Bible. And it is so clear if you read it as a whole and you don't pick it apart and make it small little verses and little sections. If you look at it as a whole, the point is clear. The point of the spiritual gifts is to help others, not yourself. So if you are coming, asking for the Holy Spirit because you want to have an encounter or an experience, you want to speak in tongues, you want to prophesy, you want it for yourself, you're missing the point and you're going to be ignored by God. So stop and just start focusing on helping others. When you receive a prophecy, it is for others. When you receive a teaching, it is for others. That's the clearest one for me because that's what I usually am walking in. I experience some of the others occasionally, but I don't understand them as much. 
But teaching is something that the Lord teaches me so that I can teach others. And the more I walk in that, the more he teaches me and the more I begin to understand because I'm using it to build others up and not just myself. When I was only building myself up, it happened sometimes, but really not, a, not that much. When we gather together and we are looking to have the spiritual gifts and have these encounters and it's really all about us having an experience, one, we're missing the point, two, we'll be ignored by God, and three, there is a good possibility that the spirit you will encounter will not be the spirit of God because you're not walking in obedience to God in the first place. And that's something that I think we see in the church a lot where we see these, like I mentioned earlier, these manifestations that look more like what the Bible describes as demonic than what the Bible describes as the Holy Spirit. When people are writhing on the ground and shaking and throwing themselves around and the church is telling us that that's the Holy Spirit, but the Bible says that whenever that happened, Jesus drove the demon out that was causing it. Because that's not the Holy Spirit. The spiritual gifts that come from God are for building up the church. The manifestations of the Spirit are for building others up. If you are shaking on the ground and writhing and throwing yourself around, you're not building anyone up. That's not a spiritual gift. That's not from God. And when you are coming looking only for an experience for yourself, you are opening that door to have an experience that is not even from God. The spiritual gifts are not for you. God will help you by giving spiritual gifts to others. He will build you up through other people. That's how the body works. We help each other grow. And we're going to get into some of that in the next video, where we talk about what it should look like when we meet together. For now, remember, the purpose of the Spirit is to give you a new heart, and the purpose of the spiritual gifts is to build others up into the image of Christ to make the whole body grow stronger. It's not for you to have an encounter and it's not for you to have an experience. It is for you to help others.